Okay, so I'm recording on this thing about my thoughts on the COVID vaccine. And, uh, well, my, my own, you know, so and I'll share it from um, my experience of The Course in Miracles and, Hawk and Dr. Hawkins uh, and my study of both of them. And um, so, um, I'm only subject to the thoughts I hold in mind. So it's only my thoughts which have the power to affect me. And, uh, and I think the course actually says it in lesson 14. So I have my personal thoughts, which are my own belief systems. And if I hold a personal belief system about anything, then I will be subject to that belief system, whether it's positive or negative. And, uh, uh, and so, there's also what I call the, the course talks about it, the collective, the programs, the thoughts, the fears that I pick up from, you know, TV, from the collective, from speaking to, to people in fear and or to buying the collective fear that might be running through society at the moment. So I'm going to tie this all to my thoughts on the COVID vaccine uh, for myself and others. Uh, you know, that could change, you know, uh, but um, so my thing is, um, I took, um, uh, and I'm, I must I say on this is a video, I'm not a medical doctor, please see if you've got anything, please, uh, I recommend that you go to your doctor and take their advice, I'm not a medical advisor. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, like when I had my, um, the thing with vaccines, I'll give you an example. So, okay, let me give the theory first. So I understood like Haw Hawkins had recovered from 23 illnesses just by clearing his thoughts, uh, doing the Course of Miracles and letting go of all his repressed feelings like fear, shame and guilt, and just letting those out and, and experiencing everything and experiencing uh, his illnesses as well, not trying to hide from them, uh, the, the feelings are and be below them. And, um, and then everything else, you know, um, I'm only subject to what I hold in mind. In truth, I'm an infinite being. So in my true nature is infinite, i.e. nothing limited can stick to who I am. I'll try and paraphrase that. So I've had infinite experiences in infinite light, white light spiritual experiences. And in there, no negative thought can stick in mind. It's impossible. And I had a, a, a you know, with an enlightened teacher in Brixton, I had a, a white light, uh, yeah, it was him with him that I had the white light spiritual experience. And I went in and feel like, it seemed like it was a dark day. I had gout and pain in my feet. And I really believed I had gout. You know, the doctors told me I have gout. Um, and then sometimes these horrible attacks would happen in my foot and they'd swell up very fast, become red and swollen and there'd be horrific pain in them. Uh, so I would have to sometimes carry a walking stick with me in case an attack suddenly happened. So in my mind, I really believed I had gout and the medical thing with gout, uh, they give you medication and they say it's because you've got too much high uric acid levels, which is a toxin of the breakdown of, pro of proteins in the blood. So coming from a, you know, I, you know, I came from a scientific biochemistry background. And so I believed all of this. These are my thoughts. I believed in medicine. I believed in what the collective of society believed around illnesses, that gout exists, that the doctors believe in it. In fact, I, I believe I was already programmed with it. You know, as I see it, I'm programmed. Hmm, I'll, I'll say it in more as a trick way. I am connected to the whole collective until I cancel the things, you know, even though, let's say on a simple level, I've got my personal beliefs that people have said around me, but I really do feel sometimes, well, you'd have to go into past lives and maybe go into the idea that I can even tune in to the collective or what's going on in the collective. But, but only if, um, but I can refute that. So I can, I can cancel that. I don't have to subscribe to the negative ideas in my head and I don't have to uh, agree to the negative ideas of scientists, of, of the collective, of anyone in any society in this lifetime or past lifetimes. And, you know, when I went to see uh, Muji, so I had this horrific pain 
and the day seemed very dark and dim. And then um, he asked me, well, who are you? What's observing who you are? And then suddenly the whole world disappeared in infinite white light. No time, no thought, no this or that, no color, just infinite love, bliss, and power beyond imagining, beyond anything in this world. And um, came, you know, but it only lasted whatever, however long it lasted, and then suddenly the world appeared, but I was in ecstasy. You know, the, the room seemed illuminated. I remember the teacher saying, you know, the whole room lit up. Uh, that was his report. He was trying to record the session he was having with me, but the, um, it seemed like the recorder blew. The circuits had failed and it had, had, had broken. Um, and, and it was like there was no thoughts. There was just absolute infinite bliss and peace and just witnessing the world. And, uh, and it was just absolute joy beyond imagining. And he looked at me, I was probably not one for speaking but that much at that point. And he just said like, you can go now, that's, uh, that's it. And then and chucked me out, which was great, it was, was fine. And I just witnessed and, and the whole, it was like witnessing a world in, um, in summer. It's like I went in there in winter, but everything was bright and, and blissful. And here's the thing I realized later on when my thoughts, when I went back into my ego and my thoughts and the fear started to come back, I had to go to work. So I tried to pull on my thoughts and start thinking to do my job. And then suddenly my old ego came back and, and the world became much more dim. But what I realized going in there, I was hobbling, just trying to get there in excruciating pain to meet my one-to-one -one session, which I wanted with the teacher. And now re on recognition in hindsight, looking back on that day, there was the pain had vanished in the infinite light. It seemed like without any negative thoughts, not only had the pain vanished, and I was, walk you know, it seemed like the body was walking as if it had never had pain, even though, you know, in the morning it had swollen up. And it was horrific. The skin sort of tears and the pain is excruciating. And there was no pain. It was like in that immersing of the light, uh, you know, the illness just vanished in a split second. So I know that in truth, if I let go of my negative thinking, I am an infinite being. And negative thinking is a generalized world. I mean, I have my own conscious beliefs, then I have my unconscious beliefs, and then I have my belief systems, conscious and unconscious, I've picked up from the world or just watching TV or family or tuning into things or understanding things, or even like, you can even pick up belief systems while you're asleep or while you're a kid. So it, it's more than you think, uh, because people get in the news. I don't remember believing that. So it's quite sophisticated how we can pick up belief systems. Anyway. So I knew that when in the Course of Miracles and, and the thing that I heard from Hawkins about I'm only subject to the thoughts I hold in mind, I'm an infinite being or the Course of Miracles lesson 14, God did not create. For example, God did not create, um, okay, I'm going to come to the vaccine. I'm, I'm sort of waffling quite a lot. Okay, so I knew 100% from my own experience that illness is an illusion. It's just the belief systems, the thoughts I really believe, even if I don't remember believing them, that are creating it, you know, and you can have belief systems. So they're like quite complicated programs on how to manifest an illness. So I knew that these are just belief systems, which I can delete. And actually God is not subject. God did not create any illness. So, you know, the gout, the asthma uh, disappeared eventually. It took a few years of counseling. <clears throat> and then, you know, I got a transplant. It's like, as I didn't believe it, as the thoughts were raised, like the universe just uh, miraculously released, it seemed to me in my witnessing. Um, now, here's the thing. So uh, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I did a degree in biochemistry from Imperial. I was a pharmaceutical analyst. So this video is for all those people who've got fear around um, COVID vaccines. Should they take it or should they not? I would, hmm, well, it's up to you. Each level of consciousness, depending on how spiritually advanced you are, you'll be attracted to watching videos and learning about things which are negative. And that's just natural. If you're in fear all the time and you're vibrating at fear all the time, you see a fearful world everywhere you go and you'll tune into videos and programs from the world. And, uh, and you know, uh, if you just watch a video on an illness and how to have the illness over and over again, I personally wouldn't do it. 
you know, if someone said like, it, if the TV had on it, um, don't walk out of your house because you'll probably die within five minutes because um, there's something in the atmosphere. If I just watch that over and over again. Okay, here's the thing. I'm also a hypnotherapist. I, I am actually a certified hypnotherapist, even though I've, um, and, um, and there was a very interesting program by a, a famous hypnotherapist, even though I did specialize in stop smoking. It was not, you know, it was a bit before. That was the thing I was doing. I had a practice in Warren Street, but, you know, I did, I did um, do that for a while. Um, so the power of thoughts or beliefs is even known by a hypnotherapist to be incredibly powerful. Anyway, this guy just showed, uh, there was a TV program, it was on British TV. So this is the actual TV. If anyone's interested, it's Paul McKenna actually. Um, and uh, and he was doing all these things about the power of hypnosis and and uh, yeah so they put into trance a man into hypnosis a man and they said like um, uh, visualize that you're now in something like visualize that you're now in the Sahara Desert and and it's scorching. And you know your your left hand is starting to burn. The skin on the hand is starting to burn, and and it's becoming more intense. And at the same time, and I actually know I won't reveal all the tricks of the trade. But anyway, I'll just share it for the time being. You can, <laughs> if I could share the tricks of the trade, but I think that would be naughty, because people make a living out of it. I could do a secret from hypnotherapy, but that's not really my thing. Uh, so they put his hand. This is true. They put his hand into a bucket full of ice while they were getting him to visualize he's in the Sahara Desert and his hands burning. So his his hand is actually in the in a bucket full of ice cubes and they're filming the thing and then and they take it out and there was burn marks like his skin had been scorching on a thing. You say so um, it really does do that. I, I mean, I used to do um, I used to do in my stop smoking. Uh, uh, the um, amnesia of pain in my stop smoking clients and then I'd, I'd get them to open their eyes softly open their eyes in hypnosis and I'd show them that I was literally squeezing their skin uh, and you know you should you know almost to the extent of it bleeding it was so hard and yet I'd put them into a, you can do this as into, into anesthesia so I mean this stuff is um, is real but that was quite the thing so so we believe that if you had, if you're in ice, put your hands. I mean, it should be frostbitten. It should be frostbitten, not sort of scorching. So, actually, there is nothing. Hypnotherapists know that in the world, sun doesn't affect you, ice doesn't affect you, your body doesn't even react according to these things. How you do? It's just the thoughts in your mind which are creating all this rubbish. So um, it just shows the power of thoughts. Now, okay. Here's the thing with medicine, and I knew this from my, what I needed to do with my belief system. So, um, and I'm talking a lot, but okay, vaccines. Oh, I did this with my, I had 13 medication. I did take all the tablets because what you can do is you can take things. Oh, here's the tip. I should have said, well, I need to. The tip is you can cancel your belief in adverse side effects of whatever it is you're taking. So this is really the tip. I hope you've still been listening to the video because I thought, okay, they've got, you know, because if you believe in a medicine, you will believe in its positive and its negative. Here's the tip. So with medicines, vaccines, whatever. So let, let's say a medicine or a vaccine. Um, I, I didn't remember reading on the vaccine. What is it? 95% successful in helping you stay away from COVID. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I didn't, I haven't been actively listening to anything that might be negative about it on purpose. So let's say the scientists really believe it's 95%. When you see them and you look in their eyes and, and, and the doctors, they look like they've got the belief system. Hey, this is 95% effective. Um, and we, I mean, even medicine knows it's called the placebo effect. Even if you give someone a sugar-coated pill and say it's 100% effective and we've done 100 studies, you'll get a huge percentage of people recover from all kinds of ailments. So it's not the, it's not the medicine, it's, your, it's the belief. Uh, 
Oh, I better quickly say I'm not a doctor. Please follow your doctor's advice. This is not medical advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. Anyway, so, but the doctors do know, you can ask doctors what's placebo effect. And, um, and uh, so, I know, okay. So I'm going to, and if you take something, you already believe it has a positive effect. It will, you know, rather than having to cancel it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, swallow these 13 medications, two huge carrier bags of things. I'm going to cancel all the negatives. What are the side effects? Let me cancel all the side effects. And I did that. And within two years, I was down from 13 medications a day to one. But the consultant said he knows no one else in the hospital is taking less medication. So I know how to take things and cancel the side effects at the same time, if I think there are any. Or if I take a medicine, it seems like it has side effects. I'll quickly cancel them every day until they're gone. So, uh, and I also use field of feelings as well and other things. But um, so, you know, I, at the moment, I haven't really investigated the COVID. I mean, my father hopefully will get one soon, which I'll encourage him to do. If he did start to see, see have any symptoms, I'd counsel them on his behalf. So you can surrogate. Let's say you've got an elderly relative or husband or, or family member. And let's say he takes a medication or a vaccine and he suddenly gets, I don't know, he suddenly gets a slight rash, a tiny rash, but he seems to be, you know, it seems like it's helping him. Um, I would do, God did not create, for example, if I had, um, like if I've got parents, so I'd say God did not create a rash in my father. And so it's not real. So I can do that. Now I'll share a real story um, on this. So hopefully th this is quite a, this is quite a miraculous story. I mean, I cancelled, I've had miraculous here, extremely miraculous. I've shared them many times with all, all my illnesses by cancelling and, and feeling the feelings. So my mother, he was, had, you know, um, yeah, basically was diabetic and all her organs were, were doing really badly. And, and um, she went to the, uh, she was getting towards the end of her life and um, she went to the doctor and she had heart failure and said, look, my legs are starting to swell up now. What medicine can you give me? And they said, it's heart failure. Sorry, there is no medicine we can give you. There's nothing we can do. Um, and they sent her home. And I, I listened to her. I thought that they've got to give her a hope. They've got to pop something in her. And because she believed in that stuff, she wanted a pill. And I felt so awful for her. And I did, God did not create oedema, swell, swollen feet. God did not create oedema in my mother. I did it like mad because I felt, you know, she'd lost hope when their GP had said that to her, like, there's no medicine we can give you. This is due to heart failure. It can't be rectified at the medicine. I thought it was horrible. Personally, I thought it was very, it was not said to her in the right way. So I did it like mad, but I knew my illnesses had evaporated. And within about a day or two, it was quite mystical. And I was doing it like furiously. I didn't tell her. Uh, within about a couple of days, her, her swelling was going away and it miraculously went back to normal. And, and she somehow knew it, even without telling her, which I found really odd. Uh, she said, and she looked at me and, uh, and, she, and she showed me her feet. And I knew she knew that I did some whatever weird stuff, <laughs> weird stuff I do, something had happened. I don't talk to her because she's a, she's a Muslim and I don't talk to her about my stuff, but she thinks I'm doing some kind of cult, spiritual stuff or whatever it is. Yeah, she thinks I was in a cult because I joined a 12 step group. So that was a Christian culture. She thinks I do all kinds of weird stuff, <laughs> but I got well. But anyway, that's another story. Okay, so COVID. Now, but the, the ease at which you can cancel stuff depends on your level of consciousness and how spiritually advanced you are. So my advice to others is um, you can either do, I mean, everyone has free choice. Let me put it this way. Everyone has free choice to take a COVID vaccine or not. Um, so that's your choice and you, you must make that. Um, I would say probably what I'm, I can say what I'm probably going to do. I'm probably going to take it. And if I, because I, I haven't looked at what the, if any sort of negativity or conspiracy theories on purpose, I don't particularly want to know. Uh, but, um, but if I still got some symptoms, I would start cancelling them immediately. Like say I got a rash after they gave it to me, I, I'd cancel my I cancel this rash. I'm an infinite being subject. If it was significant, the symptoms, I would actually look up online. I'm not going to do this now. What are the what are the side effects? Because each medicine, you know, they, they'll go through the clinical trials and they'll write down and jot down. 
in 100 people, one person will feel slightly nauseous, um, two people will have a rash, and, and they'll say on the prescription, so they should have, and they'll have a list, they do a bit of Google search, that uh, these are the things, these are some of the symptoms reported frequently or infrequently. And then I'll start, if, if, it, if I've got some of them, I would I cancel my belief that the vaccine has this, you know, gives me a rash, I'm an infinite being, if that's it. I don't even want, so anyway, but you know, I had my own experience, 13 medications down to one, and I took them. And I took the, you know, it was like I, I canceled all the negative stuff as I was taking the pills, because I knew I believed in the positive stuff. And then within two years, the doctors had more or less told me to stop taking them. You don't need them any longer. So that, so I know in the power of what I'm talking about through my own experience. So I'm not really afraid. I'm not really afraid of stuff out there. And I don't try and, and, uh, and unnecessarily imprint myself with negative, negative belief systems. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording, stop.